These are the answers for the Algebra Regents exam for January 2019 for the multiple choice. In question number one, the scatter plot shown below uh, shows the relationship between the numbers of members of a family and the amount of the family's weekly grocery bills. So the most appropriate prediction of the grocery bill for a family that consists of six members. So you wanna go up to six and go straight up. You wanna draw your trend line. When you draw your trend line, you want about half the dots above and about half the dots below of your trend line or line of best fit. So it would be this purple line approximately. Where is six when you go up from six? It is approximately $300 choice two. In question number two, the function g of x is defined as negative 2x squared plus 3x. We want to know what the g value of the g of negative 3 is. So you could just take that negative 3 and sub it in for x and sub it in for x and get negative 27. Or the easiest way to actually do this is to type in the equation. Remember, g of x just stands for y equals. Um, so sub this in, type this into your y equals and then hit second and table and see where negative three is. That same answer is negative 27 or choice one. Which expression results in a rational number? Well, one of the things that you need to remember, the correct answer is choice number three, all right? Um, anytime that you divide a rational number divided by a rational number, it gives you a rational answer. So in number three, we have the square root of 36, which is six, that's a rational number, divided by the square root of 15. Six divided by 15 gives you an answer of 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is a rational number. If you go through and type in any of these other ones, you're gonna get a big, long, ugly decimal that doesn't repeat, that doesn't terminate. Those are irrational numbers. Notice that we have a rational minus an irrational that will always give you an irrational, rational times an irrational that will always give you an irrational, irrational plus an irrational will always give you an irrational. But anytime that we have two rationals like that and we're dividing, that will always give you a rational number. The math department needs to buy new textbooks and laptops for the computer science department. Uh, the, the textbook costs $116 each, and the laptops are $439 each. If the math department has $6,500 um, to spend and purchase 30 textbooks, how many laptops can they buy? So 30 textbooks times the $116 cost, that means they're spending $3,480 on textbooks. Subtract that from your budget of the 6,500, so you have a remaining $3,020 take that remaining number and divide by the cost of each laptop, $439. You can buy 6.87 um, laptops. Now you can't buy 0.87 of a laptop. So you only have enough for six of them. You would not round this to seven because you don't have enough money. All right, you have to say, you have to say that it would only be six. In question number five, what is the solution to this equation? I would personally make these into decimals by dividing the top number divided by the bottom number and distribute. So three fifths times X is 0.6 X, three fifths times four thirds is 0.8. Now you just have a two-step equation, subtract, divide, you get 0.4. In question number six, the area of the rectangle is represented by three X squared minus 10 X minus eight which expression can also be used to represent the area of the same rectangle. So you wanna know which of these, notice that they're just multiplying binomials to find the area, which of these equals this, all right? So take and do FOIL. First, outers, inners, last, multiply, and then add together your outers and your inners. When you do that to answer number one, notice that we get that same exact thing. We get three X, minus 3x squared minus 10x when we add together our outers and our inners, and then minus eight. In question number seven, which relation does not represent a function? Remember that things are not a function if they have two x values the same, if you're using an x value twice, or if they have two dots right directly above each other because that fails the vertical line test. In question in the correct answer is number four. Number four is not a function because notice that we're using this one twice. We have the point one four and the point one five. So we're using that X value 
of one twice. So that one would not be a function. Notice that all of our X values are different. We don't have any X values that are right directly above each other. We don't have any X values that are right directly above each other. So number four is not a function. In question number eight, Brittany is solving a quadratic equation. Her first step is shown below. So when I take a look at what she's doing from the problem to step number one, I can see that she switched around the order right here. All right, she just switched around the order and she also distributed. So that would be uh, answer number two and answer number four, which is choice number four, because it says which two properties did she use? In question number nine, this graph is shown below the points negative two zero, which is this red dot, and four zero, and zero negative four lay on this graph. Uh, zero negative four is right here in the blue. Which of these points can determine the zeros? The zeros are your X intercepts. So that is this point and that is this point. That's where the line crosses the X axis. So it would be A and C because it would be negative two zero and four zero. This is not a zero. This is where it crosses the Y axis. Uh, number 10, given the parent function X to the third power, the function G of X equals X minus one to the third power minus two, what happens when you do that? Well, what I would do is graph the two. All right, the original one is this blue one. And then we type in this one on the same one. Just type it into your Y equals and see what happens. Well, it shifted one unit over to the right and it shifted two units down because we're subtracting one from the X value and we're subtracting two from the entire function. In question number 11, you have C, you have D. They wanna know what C minus 2D is. Now 2D, you gotta be careful. 2D is two times three minus A inside parentheses. So be very, very careful there. So that is six minus 2D. When you go to do this, this is your C, all right? Two A squared minus five minus two times D. So notice that there's really a, um, if, we wanted to, if we wanted to do this, um, I would, you're subtracting a binomial minus a binomial. So I would line them up, line up your A squareds with your A squareds, your A's with your A's, your plain numbers with your plain numbers, change it into an adding question. So change your minus sign to a plus sign, change all the signs in the bottom row. So we have 2A squared plus nothing, which is 2A squared, nothing plus 2A, which is plus 2A. And then we have negative five plus negative six, which is negative 11. So you get this trinomial as your answer. In question number 12, Mark brought a new laptop for $1,250. He kept track of the value of the laptop over the next three years. So notice that the laptop is going down in value. Which function can be used to determine the value of the laptop after X years? Now, you could actually eliminate choices one and choice three right away because those have a 1.2 inside the parentheses, that would mean that the value is going up. We can clearly see that the value is going down. So it has to be a number that's less than one inside the parentheses. But the easiest way to do this is to type them into the calculator, all right? And see which one matches the table of values. Now you could also just take a look at these. Notice that in year one, it, um, or sorry, it, the original price was 1250. The original price where you start off at is the number in front of the parentheses. So that's why this 1000 would be wrong as well, because that's after year one, not the original number. And question number 13, the height of the ball, Dorian tossed, is given by this equation. The number five in the function represents what? Well, when you go and graph it, that plus five, you notice that the y-intercept is five. That y-intercept is where the graph is starting. This part of the graph in the negative region doesn't really exist because you can't have negative time. So this doesn't really exist at all. Where it's starting off at is five. That five is the initial height of the ball. That's where it's starting off at. In question number 14, the function 2x squared plus 6x minus 12 has a domain. Domain means your X values consisting of integers from negative two to one, which set represents the corresponding range values, range is your Y, for F of X. 
Well, what you would do is type in this equation, 2x squared plus 6x minus 12 into your y equals and check the table. You want to know what your x values for negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1 would be. Well, when you go and do that, you get these as your y values when you go and check the table. Negative 16, negative 12, and negative 4. In question number 15, which equation has the same solution as this? I would just graph them and see which one matches, all right? Now, be careful when you go and graph them to see which one matches, they have to equal zero. So if we, took, if we started with answer number one, you'd get lucky because you have to subtract 49 from both sides. So you'd really be typing in the equation y equals x plus four squared minus 49 because you need it to equal zero. So we need to subtract 49 from both sides. If you were going to try number three, you'd have to subtract 17 from both sides because we need it set equal to zero. Same thing with choice four, same thing with choice three, but with a 49. Just graph it and see which one matches. All right, see which one matches the solution. Number 16 is a very hard question. The table below shows the weight of Liam's pumpkin, L of W, Patricia's pumpkin, P of W, over a four week period of time. So Notice that um, it says Liam's pumpkin grows at a constant rate. So it gets the same, it gets bigger by the same amount each time. Patricia's weight grows at a weekly rate at approximately 52%. So notice that we have L of W, this is Liam, and this is Patricia. So Liam's pumpkin, notice that it goes up by 3.1 pounds each week. This one goes up by 52%. So you would have to take that number and figure out what the 52% of 2.5 is and add it to the original amount. So 2.5 times 52% is 1.3. Add that to the 2.5 to get 3.8. That's where we get that next number and keep on going from there. Um, so if you actually went and figured out the total values by adding those specific amounts, all right, um, it says, assume the pumpkins continue to grow at those same rates. They want to know when comparing the weights of Liam and Patricia's pumpkin in week 10 and 13, which statement is true. So notice that our, our chart stops at week nine. We have to continue on adding 3.1 to Liam's each time, adding 52% to Patty's each time. It's a lot of work to figure those numbers out for Patricia, all right? But it's Liam's weight. The correct answer is Liam's pumpkin will grow more in week 10 and Patricia's pumpkin will grow more in week 13. In week 10, um, Liam's pumpkin increases by 3.1. In week 10, Patricia's pumpkin, Patricia's pumpkin, or sorry, Liam's pumpkin will weigh more in week 10. Notice that Liam's pumpkin weighs 14 and Patricia's pumpkin weighs 13. And Patricia's pumpkin will weigh more in week 13. So then we look at week 13, notice that Patricia's is now 47, where Liam's is only 24. It's a lot of work to get those numbers, especially for Patricia, but you have to keep on adding that 52% each week. In number 17, the domain of this function, domain are your X values. Notice that we have a dot here, not a arrow. So it starts off at negative one for our X value, and it keeps on going and going and going. So it's all the numbers that are bigger than negative one for X value or equal to it because it's a solid dot. If it was an open dot, it would just be greater than. Question number 18, which pair of equations would have negative one comma two as a solution? Just graph them, graph them and find the intersection point. You wanna see where the two lines cross at negative one comma two. Remember, this is your X value, this is your Y value. So over to negative one, and up to negative two. So you're looking for like this point right here. Um, so where do they have that same intersection point? Um, when you graph three, they cross right there. In number 19, which function could be used to represent the sequence? 8, 20, 50, 125, blah, blah, blah. Given that a sub one is eight. So this is your a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, four, five. Well, what we need to do is sub them in and check. All right, there's no other really way to do it. We just need to take these numbers and sub them in and check to make sure. So we have to take each one of these and sub it in. For example, 
if we have the 2.5 times the a sub two minus one. The eight, two minus one, our a sub one is eight. So two minus one is one. So we have a sub one, that answer is eight. 2.5 times eight, that's 20. Um, when we do the a sub three, all right? Um, the a sub three, three minus one is two. So we have to take our a sub two answer, which was the 20 and sub it in right there. 2.5 times 20 is 50. Notice that that is our um, a sub three. And we would keep on going and keep on going. This is the one that matches. That's a hard question too. The formula for electric power is P equals I squared times R. We want the formula for I, all right? So we want I equals. Notice that all of them are I equals, but we're gonna take this formula. We wanna try and get the I, the I all by itself. The first thing that I would do is divide by R and divide by R. P divided by R is just P divided by R. We just leave it like that. The opposite of squaring a number or a letter is to take the square root of it. So when we have I squared here, to get I all by itself, we need to take the square root of it. So to take the square root of both sides, we end up with the square root of P divided by R, which is choice two. Question number 21. Um, the functions are shown below. We have three separate ones. We have a graph, we have an equation, we have a table. When the input, input means X is four, which functions have the same Y value, the same output value? Well, when X equals four here, your Y value is three. If I go to type this into my Y equals and do second and table, when X equals four, Y equals three. And when X equals four, Y equals three, according to the table. So all three of them have the same output value. In question number 22, using the substitution method, all right, Vito is solving for the following systems of equations algebraically. The substitution method means that you need to sub in. The first thing that we need to do is rearrange this one for Y equals. So trying to get the Y all by itself, we need to do minus three X and minus three X to get the y all by itself. Then we need to sub it into the other equation. Now that we know what y is, we need to sub it in for y. So subbing it in, notice that this is what our y value is. We need to sub it into there to use. In question number 23, this is a hard one too. Materials A and B decay over time. That means they get smaller. The function for the amount of material A is this, and for B it's this where T represents the time and days. On which day will they be equal? Well, what I would personally do is just type them into Y equals and see where they're exactly the same, all right? Um, you're gonna see that they are the exact same graph. You wouldn't think that they are, but they are the same exact graph when you graph them. So they are equal every single day. And in number 24, what were the fi final units for the conversion? Miles and miles would cancel out hours and hours would cancel out, feet and foot would cancel out. What are we left with? We're left with inches over miles or sorry, inches over minutes. So inches per minute, top divided by bottom, inches per minute. So that is the multiple choice for January, 2019.